If you've ever fancied putting working lights on your DC or DCC guards van with three rear lights and two white forward facing ones, then this is the video for you. Hi, welcome to Chadwick Model Railway, I'm Charlie. I've been quite looking forward to doing this video for quite some time, but it's taken me a while to um, acquire the bits in which to do it. And it's all about lighting of brake vans. Now my layout is based 1968-ish, 1974, or kind of around that sort of times. And I have acquired a copy of the British Railways rule book 1950, uh, though reprinted and from the 1st of January 1962. It's all about brake van lights. And I'll just read page 123, para 121. Freight trains, with the exception of fully fitted trains, that's one with uh, vacuum brakes or air brakes throughout, must carry side lights to show a white light forward on the rear brake van after sunset or during fog or falling snow. The indications on the rear must be on fast lines, main lines, single lines two red lights. So what's that all about? Well, <laughs> it's great isn't it? Thank you Jim. This is Jim's. Um, so normally on a brake van you'd get one of these in the middle of the brake van facing to the rear and it would be showing red to the rear. On fully fitted freight trains and that's all you would get because if the tra train broke in half then the bit that broke away it would stop because the brakes would come on. So that's for just on its own on fully fitted trains. However if you're running a train that's not fully fitted, part fitted i.e. or not no brakes at all then you need two of these. Great aren't they? So your train has two of these one either side and they both shine red at the back, one of these in the middle shining red at the back, but facing forward it should shine white. And that's quite obvious now is because if you're the train driver you need to ensure that your train is intact if it's unfitted and therefore when you look back at your train you should see a white light and if you go around the bend obviously you can see uh, the inside one go around the other way you'll see the other one so you've got two white lights facing forward. There are exception, uh, exceptions on this and there are freight lines and slow lines and let's say you've got four tracks so you've got two in one direction two in the other well in the, on the slow track sometimes you are required with this light to show one white light facing backwards so that um, a kind of express passenger train coming out from behind will realise it's not on your track because that driver will see a one red light, the other red light, the other black one, and one white light facing backwards so he knows it's a slow unfit, unfitted freight train going in the same direction. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. <laughs> I'll put this out, it's a bit of a fire risk I think. Nigel, thank you very much for the loan of the black light. Much appreciated. So Jim and Nigel are both members of the West Camel Model Railway Society down in Deepest Dark at Somerset and I appreciate their uh, the loan of their bits um, very much indeed. So much so that what I'm going to do today is fit those three lights onto a Backman 21 ton brake van. This is actually owned by Jim so I'll do it for him um, in uh, exchange for the loan of his lights if of course I can ever get it out of the box. So it's a standard Backman um, 21 ton brake van. I'm sure you've seen it all the time. So what I intend to do is strip it down and I'll take it apart. I've got some lights from DCC Concepts, the single brake light, one that goes in the middle facing backwards. And I've got some of the dual lights, red back, red backwards, white forwards. Um, and have some pickups and some gizmos to make it all work. So let's crack on and I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So the first thing you need to do is obviously to get it apart. Um, it's all straightforward. Um, sorry about this Jim, I'm bound to break some of the bits and bobs as it comes off because 
um, these guardrails here have to be unclipped from the body shell and also these ones here. So these have to come out first. So we give those a little yank. Let's try it with that. And there's obviously these two this side and there is two the other. Let's try to be gentle with them but it's the only way you get the one, there's two, that one broke, but at the end of the day there's nothing a bit of glue won't sort out, that one came out okay, and this one here, that one broke as well. Still two down, two to go. Um, then we need to take out these um, these handrails from the bed or guardrails from that bed. If we pull it out from the body shell rather than ah, this is easier. So take them out from the body shell rather from rather than the track bed. I think that's probably an easier. <laughs> that might be an easier option. Two. Three. Four. There she goes. Of course you're convinced you're just going to smash it all up but at the end of the day it's only a bit of glue isn't it <laughs> a bit of glue and obviously the advantage is it's jim's <laughs> it's jim's brake van come on ah. okay so there it is coming apart we need to get this piece of plastic off and uh the brake fan's in pretty, pretty nifty condition, really didn't break too much of that, did we? So now we need to get this plastic sheet out, and I think it's these lugs here. Yes it is. So it's a case of pushing them towards the centre of the body shell, and then you can see this piece here starts to come away. Remembering, of course, that you've got these um, guardrails, you don't really want to smash those up. Okay, there's that, and there's the weight. So, that's that next bit. Now, just taking a look at this um, wagon, as you can see, we have um, the three lamp irons at either end. So this is where we're going to put the white one and here we're going to put um, the black ones which will which will face both ways. So now we need to look at the, some of the bits that we're going to need and in this little pack from a DCC Concepts you get six single colour i.e. red LEDs with varnished tails so this, this isn't copper they are insulated from each other um, but they are varnished and if you look closely you can get to the ends and you can see there is no varnish towards the very very ends there appears to me no varnish on that one or on that one this one here that appears to be varnished to the end anyway you get six of these and you also get a 
choice of resistors. Now, if you're into electronics, which you don't have to be to complete this, any, any sort of skill whatsoever, the size of the resistor, will not the physical size, that is the resistance of the resistor, will lead you to uh, determine the brightness of the lamps. So here we have three packs of resistors that they've supplied. They've supplied 50 kilo ohm resistors, 10 kilo ohm resistors and 30 kilo ohm resistors. So next we need to unpack the other um, DCC concept lights to see what size resistors are actually fitted within this packet, which are the red and white lights. That way we can choose the resistors so that we've got the same sort of brightness coming out of the two different types. Well, it will be no surprise if I tell you that exactly the same again, you've got your 10K, your 50K and your 30K. Sadly, the printing isn't ideal on the 30K. And if you're ever worried about resistors, which ones are which, if I compare these 30K to the other sets of 30K, you may be able to see that the color coding on the resistors is identical. And there is some strange um, methodology in all this that you can see um, exactly where the uh, exactly the values by working out in a color coded chart. So I have 10, 50 and 30k resistors for both sets of lights. So um, just take a look at these lights now, these what do you call it? The, the dual um, the dual lights, the red and the uh, and the white. It's a little bit of a bird's nest there. So there's my first one. And there's my second one. Beautiful. And I note that these have three wires, not two. So obviously you can wire the reds and the, the whites independently. Now it's worth a mention that this lamp here, the single lamp, supplied by DCC Concepts, it comes in black and I have painted it white because obviously I needed a white light. Um, so there we go, it kind of um, depicts the GWR kind of Western region, British Railways white, except um, the carrying handle is 90 degrees out. but. Um, let's not be honest here, we're not going to keep me, keep me awake at night for that. So, those have got two wires on them and the double aspect ones have got three. So, we just need to check the intensity of this LED and hopefully you can see it just in here. And then if I connect up these crop clips with a 10k resistor and there it is on. So I certainly don't want it any dimmer than that so the 10k resistor is what we should use. Now of course we've got to figure out how to get these cables from the lights into the body of the guards van and clearly this one here will come straight through the body shell. But what I do need to do is remove a little bit of material to make sure I can glue um, the red light onto the back. So I shall remove with a scalpel a little bit of material off of there. Okay, that's just enough and now we need to get these cables from these outside two through into the guards van body. The cables from this one would just go through on the inside and then down here across the floor but we do need to get these ones into here so I think the best way to do is this is a 0.7 millimeter uh, drill in the pin vise is just to drill straight through here. I just re-drilled the hole. I've come in a little bit, sort of 
five or so millimetres from the end. Wasn't too sure that I was starting to go through the roof. Okay, that's better. So hopefully you can see that. Zoom you right in. There's the drill going through. And that should be adequate for me to thread those tiny cables through. So now I'll just repeat that on the other side um, for the other light. Well, I've drilled a hole through and passed the cables from the, uh, from the single red light. And hopefully you can see and they'll pass right through down here. And I've also cut my thumb. What a surprise. So now it's a case of gluing this in place. And I always find this a dilemma because we have so many different glues, I never know what to use. So I'm going for uh, Deluxe Rocket Max Thick Non-Runny Sino Glue Bonds in 10 to 20 seconds, which will give me a fair amount of working time um, once I put the glue in place. So I'm not necessarily stuck um, with it bonding in literally kind of seconds. And I've got a little nozzle on the end of this too, so I can kind of get the glue in a little bit more of a precise location. So down comes the glue. And as you'd expect, it just wanders all over the place. So let's see if I can hold it there for the 20 seconds alleged setting time. What I don't have any uh, with me is any um, super glue activator. You know, the stuff that makes it set in, uh, in a considerably shorter time. And it's stuck to the pliers. Oh, I hate super glues. And I think we're there. A little bit messy, a little bit of a glue behind, but nothing but a bit of matte varnish won't um, clean up. And hopefully you can see that looks half reasonable. I've just threaded the second one through. Um, and interestingly, I can't glue it on yet because <laughs> I don't know which way the red and the white is, because obviously the red needs to face the rear. So the next thing to do is obviously to reconnect it up again and figure out which way is which before I then glue it onto this lamp iron. So I've glued on the second lamp. And then hope, hopefully you can see there that these wires are just hanging down. So clearly we need to kind of get rid of those now. And I'm sure you've heard of something called blue tack, but there is also something on the market called black tack. And that's the packet you're normally used to, I imagine. But this stuff, black tack, you may have come across it um, within your locomotive fleet. It's the um, same as blue tack, but tackier. What a surprise that was. Um, and there's also something called white tack which is also like blue tack, but less tackier, if that any makes any sense at all. So what I'm trying to do is just to knead a very small piece like this, and then use this to stick those cables from um, this lamp up into the recess of the ceiling uh, and tuck them out of the way. So let's see if I can poke those back out and then um, feed that little blade of black tack in there. So the first thing to do is obviously poke the cables 
up and out of the way and try to pull the slack through. Of course the worry then is you pull them too hard and you end up ripping them out of the uh, LED, which I'm sure isn't the case, but um, it's kind of always a worry on the back of my mind, I must admit. So I can push those out there down there a little bit. Keep it a bit closer, you can see what's my disastrous progress. So there's the cable showing, and I want to try to um, hide them a little more. I think that's about as good as we're going to get, really. A little bit of a paint touch up job, I think, will probably do nicely. And there's the black tack. Hopefully you can see at the bottom there. So that's two lamps down, one to go. See you in a bit. So there's all three lamps are now installed and I've put the, uh, the black tack underneath the, uh, the second black lamp. And I think the best thing to do now is to put that aside for a few hours to make sure that that super glue cures. But in the meantime, what I can do is work on the pickups. Now, I bought these pickups, they're from Lock Sound, and the number is 50707. And in the little packet come these pickups. I think there's eight in a packet, is it? Right, there we go. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a packet. So what I want to do now is install these onto the backs of these wheels like that. And so that those wipers, I'm sure, which I hope you can see. So the edge here and there go against the wheels and bring the power up from the track and then I'll stall one on either side, so each wheel set will get one, loop a cable across, and then loop that cable into the inside. In the meantime, I just need to remove this sticker, and then we'll, I imagine, super glue these, yep, we'll super glue those into place. Well, that was quite straightforward, really, just drop them in and put a bit of super glue, and I've also ran um, an extra sort of drop of super glue around the edges, and you can feel on the wheels now, there's a little bit of um, friction as those wheels go around. So I think we'll call it a day and we'll start again tomorrow morning with looping these across um, and then bringing the power up through the bottom of the guards van and then somehow we've got to get all this together. To get power from the pickups we need to um, solder some wire to connect the two across and then uh, take this power up through the body. So I'm using some very uh, thin equipment wire and this is thinner than um, what we regard as 702. Um, so I'll just cut that to length and solder those bits on. I just need to tin these ends. And the van itself already has um, a soldered area, so just by keeping a drop of solder on the end of the soldering iron, we should gear go straight in there and, and dab these on.
Next we need to connect the leads up that's going to take the power from the pickups into the body of the van. And then thread them up this little hole here. And then we're ready to connect into the rest of the circuit board. I'll just refit uh, the weight and the plate that came off when we dismantled the uh, van. So if I pop the weight on first and with these two wires what I want them to do is pass through this little gap here. So if I turn that around to you a little bit more and just clicks into place. Now the next thing you want to do is connect it up to a circuit board and here you can see on eBay this charming chap sells these tiny circuit boards for £3.69 a go and basically it's a bridge rectifier with a 220 ohm and a 1 kilo ohm resistor um, along with a thousand um, I think it's microfarad or picofarad capacitor and um, the, the bridge rectifier rectifies the AC current into DC and then obviously the resistors then protect the circuit board. The capacitor holds the current um, should you go over any dirty track to allow the uh, guards van lights to stay on. So here's this little component and hopefully you can see this is track power coming into the two bottom terminals and this is where I shall put my leads from the guards van base. The next two terminals in here are for the capacitor um, and there's the um, 16 volt 1000 picofarad capacitor so that will connect into there probably with a set of leads. You must be very uh, aware that this is a polarity conscious item and, and the just remember the legs. The, le the negative is the shorter of the two legs and hopefully here you can see the negative symbol. So the positive is the longer leg and on here it is marked positive over on camera right and negative over here on camera left. And then finally there's two terminals then that go out to feed our lights. So what I need to do next is to think about how we're going to put all this lot together and um, so to bring these two cables onto this then think about the capacitor with a set of fly leads I imagine and then finally we need to get through the resistors out into the guards van itself. I think the best way of doing this will be probably be to assemble the guards van lights through the resistors into here first and then connect this onto there so I'm not hindered by the proximity of the capacitor and the van so it's just um, I shall just work it out with these wires first and uh, and then get all these through their resistors onto these terminals and then we can take it from there. Now to make things a little simpler I've threaded a little bit of heat shrink onto each set of cables because they end up in such a sort of a bird's nest otherwise um, and I need to now find out let's say on these three cables from this light down here which one is the, the return is it I mean I don't know if it's a common cathode or a common anode but all I do know is one's the red light one's the white light one's the return so all I do now is moving these cables out of the way is connect them up to the crock clips until one of them comes on, change them over uh, to the other cables until you can figure out which one is the return for those um, uh, for that circuit. So if I pop this one onto here, and again I don't know which one it is, and then if I turn my power on and dab it on there. And so by a process of elimination now I'll figure out which of these two cables that's connected is actually the, earth, is the return on these lights by finding uh, the white one next. Now hopefully this isn't the confusing bit because I have to talk about the electronic side. 
Now, with these three-legged um, LEDs that go both black, <laughs> go both white and red, um, the three legs are of different lengths. And that's because the longer one should always be the anode. And these are wired up. I'm pretty sure that it's a common AMA anode. So both of these other two legs are cathodes. So the power runs in the cathode through the LED and then back out here. This is the common. And I've done this to all three LEDs and I've marked them all with a red tag. So those common anodes can be soldered together onto one of these terminals on this tiny little circuit board. Now the others, the other five circuits, that's the, the two reds and the two whites on the outside and the red on the inside, they really should have five different resistors because certainly between the whites and the reds, they have different strike rates. I know this is confusing. I'm just as confused as you are. But if you put a red and a white together on the same resistor, turn it on, only one of the lights will come on because it will come on at a different voltage than the others. So they do need a different resistor. So what I've actually done is bound five resistors together, all, all of the same, they're all the 10 ohm resistors, bound them all up and twisted the leg. I shall solder that. And then when I figured out which one of the two LED terminals they go on, I will solder that straight onto that terminal and obviously the common from the the three anodes will go on to the other one i do hope that makes sense now the capacitor the capacitor long leg is always the anode now the anode is the positive so i'm going to wire a set of leads onto the end of this capacitor so what i shall do is i use a red and black and the red will be the positive and the black will be the negative. So that'll be an easy way of knowing which one's which. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do now is wire these two um, together. Uh, sorry, solder these two into the um, terminal block once they've soldered to the uh, capacitor. And then I shall probably bring in the cables from the um, truck itself onto there. And then we shall go around um, and solder all of those terminals onto here and I might try a little bit of a heat shrink here and then the common anodes together. I know it's going to be confusing um, but we'll see how we get on. A little tip here if you're stuck for a third hand kind of thing and you want to do some soldering or whatever I just use a piece of blue tack um, to hold the item in place. I've snipped back those terminals on the uh, capacitor a little bit. I just need to now bring in my soldering iron and uh, a little bit of solder on there and onto the legs of the capacitor that should hold those in place you can see what I mean about using the blue tack because it does make it much more stable And back on our little circuit board now, and we can see um, which is which. So the red is the positive, which is going into that side. And I noticed that you can actually poke these through. And what I'm thinking of doing, whether to poke them through and solder them on the other side. And just a quick dab of solder and hopefully that should hold it still. Yep, and it frees up the other side of the board quite nicely. So that's the negative on. Now we want to thread the other side of the capacitor through the positive. And then once more in with a quick dab from the soldering iron, not to hang around that long. And 
and that's those two held onto the circuit board. I've tinned the, uh, the legs of the five resistors and also trimmed them down. So the next stage now really is to, to start soldering in the five cables from the LEDs. First off we'll tin these legs. And I thought I'd slide a small piece of heat shrink up the leg of each of the cables. So this being the cable from the central red. So if I slide that heat shrink up and then solder this one onto there, when the heat shrink comes down it will cover that connection. Okay, so it's a case of one at a time now and try to solder these on. So there's the first one and slide the heat shrink and see if that will go over. And yes it does. Okay, that seems like a plan. So now the next one, and just a case now of, of repeating what we've done before. So that's all five there, all covered in heat shrink. So the three remaining cables should just be the anodes ready to go on the other terminal. Lovely. Now it does strike me I need to drive more solder in here and no doubt this will come straight off again. Did we get away with it? Yes, I think we did. So let's have a little look then on camera and see if these lights all work okay. So I need the board. Can you see the lights? So a light test and coming in here with track power and I can see the two white lights on the back of there. Can you see three reds on the front is the question. And If I lean over and take these off the capacitor should keep them running. And yes there's three reds. So just in case my big head was in the way of any of that then so there's the capacitor and those cables go into there on this side which is the, uh, the, the anode side, the negative, I've got the five resistors going out to the five different lamps and coming on the positive side, the anode, is the three return cables from each lamp. So all I'm going to do now is run a hairdryer over these heat shrinks um, to get those a little bit more um, permanent and then reassemble it and we should be um, good to go. I shall put a little bit of tape here and there to stop it shorting out. Of course let's not, let's not lose sight of the last bit of soldering which is obviously these um, the track power cables need to come in as well from the from the two uh, terminals from the guards van itself. So now it's time for reassembly and when I poke all the all the bits into the van the thing to keep an eye on is those two cables that come from this light here because they just need tucking down because um, there's no black tack holding those in yet. 
So now it's a case really of repositioning the van to make sure all the wires keep out of the way. And um, it should kind of snap just like that into place. Okay. And then we've got all the handrails to go through as we did when we dismantled it. As we dismantled it. Oops. Not quite locked in yet. This time my glue of choice is... Um, it's EMA model supplies plastic weld and this stuff um, uh, I think has a warning on the side that it's carcinogenic so uh, so no worries there then and all I'll do is just a little dab of this stuff and then run it along the seam of the wagon then hold it shut and the same on the other side at least with this stuff if it all goes wrong in a, a month or two or whatever I can uh, I can open it up. If I was to super glue this, then clearly it would be um, a real hatchet job to get this uh, vehicle back open. <clears throat> this vehicle back open again. Now I'd hate to uh, be criticised for being all over DCC, so I thought I'd introduce you to this little device. This is a duet, and I'm sure many of you people have seen it. And it's a DC DC controller. So let's check out the guards van with that. As you can see, I've given Jim another little present in the shape of the guard. So if I bring that back here and turn this up, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there is lights. And now I certainly got two whites on the back and hopefully you should have two reds on the front, uh, three reds on the front. And if I turn this straight off, we should get a few seconds of uh, lighting to continue. And now if I turn it in the other direction, because, you know, DC, DC dries both ways, and you can clearly see that this little beastie will run on both DC and DCC. Of course, on DC, when you turn it off, it'll eventually go off but at least it will run in both directions. And that's all to do with that uh, bridge rectifier that came through. So now it's confession time. Hopefully you saw the two uh, sets of text that I put in there saying, never connect the LEDs up to a power source without the resistor because you'll blow them. So please uh, make a note of that. And also I mentioned that the LEDs with a 10K resistor with a DC supply are fine, but once you connect them to DCC, they're too bright and you really need to opt or to test it out with the 30 or the 50K resistors. So let's have a look at the guards van now with a DCC supply. And here we are powered by my trusty old Dynamis and I'm sure you can see that all three red lights are on. But what I think is difficult to appreciate is how bright they are now because they are considerably brighter than with just the DCC feed. If I flip it around to show you the, the white, white running lights and then hopefully you can see at either side those are the lights um, for the driver to check that the train is intact and they also appear to be um, too bright uh, for a layout, especially if you want to run it with your um, if the room lights down to, you know, to show a bit of a little bit of evening atmosphere, let's say, then I think they are too bright. So what can I do there? Well, fortunately, um, this, being, this, being, <laughs> this being Jim's breakdown, it's fine. No, in all honesty, um, it is fine. Um, it's just that I'm a little bit more picky and when I start to do my own fleet I will no doubt try the 30 and the 50k resistors to see which suits best. Well we draw to the end of another epic. But it would be wrong if I didn't talk about money. So, uh, sexy new guards van. Um, how much did the bits cost? Um, I think the pickups from ESU, I think we ran about £10 for eight. And please remain seated for this one. The single 
six single lights from DCC Concepts, around about £20. And six of the dual lights, i.e. red and white, are about £24. So this clearly isn't cheap. And of course, you know, there's the, um, oh, and the little bit on eBay, which is kind of uh, three or four pounds for that um, electronics chip. And I bought 10 because I can see myself using those for all sorts of uh, ideas, like coaches. Um, Richard from Everard Junction, I got the idea from because he used that on his coaches. But I thought guards vans were something that, um, you know, tend to get ignored, really. Um, but an interesting thing. Now, I've made a couple of mistakes with this. You can see the cables and the capacitor through the windows. So what I should have done was put some black card on the inside of the windows. And what I may do, if it was mine, I might not do because it's because uh, <laughs> it's Jim's. Sorry, Jim. I could always take the roof off and slide some black card on the inside. But we'll see. When it's running around at an angle, you probably can't see it. But if you look directly into it, you can. OK. Oh, and... I thought with, a, with this kind of a how-to, should I talk about the level of difficulty? Because when you see me sitting there waving a soldering iron around, you might think it's quite difficult or you might think it's quite easy. So on a scale of beginner, intermediate, advanced or expert, where would this come? It would come in advanced. I wouldn't say it's coming in expert because if it's an expert, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. So it's certainly not for the beginner. Um, you know, it's not for a novice kind of thing, this. It is quite difficult and of course you need lots of gear and all sorts of stuff. But, so if I've spent, let's say, um, 4, 8, uh, 15, 20 quid, say 25 quid on this brake fan, I noticed that I had £8.50 on the box when Jim had bought it. So it's quite surprising. And most of you know that I'm involved with McKinley Railway and there should be a link here um, if you don't know anything about it. And down at McKinley I was involved with one of their brake vans and it's this one here. And it looks almost identical to that one except it doesn't have forward facing white lights. It just uses ordinary, LED, ordinary red LEDs and you paint them black to start with and then you paint them white as required and the black paint stops the light bleeding through. Um, but this, this one's a little bit different. It's got a magnet and stuff inside so you can reverse um, the lights. But at the end of the day, that one probably costs less than a tenner. But you don't get the forward facing white lights, so you don't get the um, authentic feel. But um, they are what they are. And if you look at them now in close up, you could say that, you know, looking at the lights from a lights point of view, there is very little difference. Of course, you don't get the white lights running forward, which is what I particularly wanted for this particular evolution. So there we are at the end of another epic. And I do hope you've thoroughly enjoyed yourselves watching me struggle with a soldering iron and those tiny flimsy little cables covered in um, sort of an enamel varnish. It was a uh, it was a challenge, but tools wise, I didn't use anything special really. Um, it was just, you know, a reasonable soldering iron. But the beauty of it is, of course, is it's DC and DCC. And so much these days is DCC only because that's the fashion, it's the flavor of the day. So I thought I would bring my, uh, myself into the DC camp for this one and show you um, exactly what, what you can do with DC. Um, so it's not just, you know, the, uh, the elitist kind of feeling of DCC. Ugh. And so to finish, well, as usual, I would like to thank the people who donate to my channel. Um, your generosity is very much appreciated. And in particular, my patrons who do help support the channel and allow me to buy and test all these bits on your behalf. If you haven't subscribed, then please do and give me a thumbs up and you can ring the bell icon and all that kind of stuff because um, obviously subscriptions are free and there should be a video here and here. And hopefully I'll see you next Friday at 12 o'clock. Take care. Thanks a lot. Stay safe. Bye bye.